Data structures are the type of variables that can store multiple values. In the four types of data structures in Python, the first one is lists. If you are familiar with other programming languages, lists are similar to what are called as arrays in other languages. If you don't know what an array is, that's okay. Lists are, as the name suggests, a list of values. To be more precise, a list is ordered collection of data values separated by commas and enclosed in square brackets. Lists are used when the order of the stored data matters. Also, lists are mutable, so you can modify the values of a list in place. To create a new list, assign a variable, let's say L1, with an open and closed bracket. This is an empty list. Now, if you try to print L1, you can see we get the empty list. You can also pre-populate the list with a bunch of values. Let's say L2 equal to 1, 2, 3. In many of the other programming languages, you cannot store 1 and 1.4 in a single list since 1 is int value and 1.4 is float value. But Python lets you store any type of value in a single list. For example, take L3. Now you can store an integer value, let's say 12, a float value, let's say 3.14, a boolean value true and a string hello and even another list now let's print it and see now if you forgot to add an element in the list you can do so by typing l1 dot append and you can pass in one value let's say 100 now let's see what is in l1 as you can see, the integer 100 has been appended to the list. What the append function does is, it takes the value you gave it and adds it to the end of the list. Similarly, if you want to remove an element from the list, you can do so by typing l3.remove. Let's say I wanted to remove the value true from the l3. I can type in true here and then run it. And if we check it, indeed, the true has been removed. Now, if you don't understand what this dot append and remove mean, that's okay. What's happening here is the moment you assign this variable with a list, this variable becomes a list object and it automatically gets all the properties of a list. To know what properties are there for a list, you can use the dir function. Just type dir and open and close parentheses and in it, you can pass any of the list object. Let's say L3. These are the list functions. To know about a single method, you can use the help function. Let's see for pop, all you have to do is type help and any list method dot pop. When you run it, it gives you information about that method. It says pop takes an index and it removes and returns the item at that index. If we don't provide index, by default, it removes the last one. And it also says that it raises an error if the list is empty or the index is out of range. So let's try it on L3. First, let's see what L3 has. It has four elements. Now let's use pop on L3. And let's say I wanted to remove the second element. So I type in one because indexing starts from zero. And it also says that it, it returns that item. That means we can store it in another variable. So let's say I type in val. Now after that, if I print L3 and val, let's see what we get. Indeed, the 3.14 that is in index one has been removed and it is stored in val. That is why when we print val, we get 3.14. These are the various list methods. You can pause the video right now and take a look at them. Okay, after this video, you can experiment them by trying out on your own. Remember, you can learn a programming language only by practicing it. Now, like I told before, the order of the elements in a list matters. So that means if we have two lists like this, you can add them together with plus operator and let's see what happens. As you can see, the order did not change. First, all the elements of A are printed and then B are joined. 
This is called concatenation and this also means that you can index them and slice them just like you would do with strings. So if I type a of 0, it should give me 1, it did. And if I type b of 1, 2, 3, it should give me 4.32 and python. And unlike strings, you can change them in place. That means if I want to change the 4.32 in b to let's say true, I can do that like so b of 1 equals true and if I print b you can see that it has been changed to true so now you understand how to solve the problem I told in the last video the grocery list one so instead of typing grocery 1 equals input grocery 2 equals input and so on till 250 all you can do is you can create one variable and make it a list and then you can just keep appending it you don't have to write this line also for 250 times we can do that easily with something called loops, which we will learn later in this course. So there you have it. This is all about lists. In the next video, we will see about sets.